They strike alluring poses in store windows, motionless models flaunting the latest fashions. For clothing retailers, mannequins are a vital sales tool. They come in fixed or flexible versions, the body's realistic or abstract. And they can be made out of a range of materials from wood to fiberglass. Meet Lady Swing and Mr. X. Not flesh and bone, but polyurethane foam. These fully flexible fashion figures start out as humongous blocks of soft polyurethane foam. Using a bandsaw, workers divide them into smaller blocks about the size of a large refrigerator. A worker creates a pressed wood mold using both a grinder and a sander to soften the inside. She applies a layer of putty over rough or damaged areas. This will harden and prevent the foam from clinging. She'll make separate molds for the arms, legs and head and torso. A one square meter slab of foam goes on top of the mold. Then a slab of harder foam called a pattern on top of that. The foam layers in wood mold now go through what's called a pressure cutting machine. Pressure forces the slabs together while a thin blade slices the excess foam away. Exactly how much pressure the machine applies is a closely guarded trade secret. The foam arms pop right out on the other side. For the head and torso, they use a foam slab measuring 139 by 43 by 14 centimeters and a foam pattern that includes shapes for breasts and a belly button and grommets to shape the nipples. This foam pattern is impressionistic. These mannequins are not meant to be anatomically correct. Here's the pressure cutting machine close up. Nine rollers compress the mold, soft foam and pattern slabs together, forcing them through a paper thin opening and slicing away up to 15 centimeters of foam. True to form, Lady Swing pops up on the other side. Her flexibility is her raison d'etre. She and Mr. X are often displayed on sports equipment like snowmobiles and bikes. Their manufacturer first named them in the 1970s and the moniker is just stuck. Workers inspect the mannequin and trim the excess material. They extract her easily because they sprayed the empty mold cavity with lubricant. Next, a worker assembles a half centimeter thick steel skeleton to give the mannequin some structure. Workers will insert the skeleton between the half sections of the foam body. A welder fuses together 16 joints in the ankles, knees, thighs, hips, elbows and shoulders. Another worker sprays slow-drying water-based glue on the skeleton and on the foam body sections that'll cover it. This will make them adhere together snugly. The hand skeletons are thin and pliable, like coat hangers, so they'll bend. A worker places the skeleton between the torso halves, positioning the foam so the edges meet evenly. These dummies don't come cheap. They sell for between six and eight hundred dollars each, depending on the market value of the foam's main ingredient, oil. Still, that's a bargain compared to their more realistic looking, but much less flexible, fiberglass cousins. They cost up to $2,000 each. After letting the parts dry and set overnight, a worker tests the limbs for flexibility. She joins together the lower leg portions. The skeleton protrudes at the heel so it can be secured to the floor when the dummy goes on display. Now here's a scene worthy of a horror movie. Using an electric carving knife, a worker slices off six centimeters from the front of the head. Ouch! She glues on a hollow face mask made of plastic using solvent-based glue for an extra strong bond. Next, they spray the mannequin with flesh-colored water-based glue. They sprinkle it with fine powder made of tiny cloth particles. This is called flocking. It takes 12 hours to dry and gives the mannequin a protective fire-retardant skin. This factory's flocking comes in 18 different colors, from a variety of skin tones to several vibrant colors. Before Lady Swing makes her debut, a makeup session. Powder blush to color her lips and cheeks, and water-based paint on her eyes, lashes, and brows. They add a wig, and voila, she's ready for her date with Mr. X.